Hey to everybody, you guys, there are only two weeks until Thanksgiving. I'm going to let that marinate, let that sink in. Two weeks, you guys, to Thanksgiving. So that means we got a whole lot to make sure we cover in the next 14 days. I'm here for you. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to leave you alone, y'all. I'm here for you. Okay, now, <laughs> hello to our Facebook family, hello to our YouTube family. I'm going to get all the equipment up and running here, guys, so we can make sure, you know, I can see everybody and talk to everybody. So, a couple of things, you know what I'm going to tell you to do first and foremost. I'm going to say, I heard you, thank you people, share this video. Yes, share it, share it, share it. I'm trying to get it up on YouTube so I can talk to the YouTube peeps. For the YouTube cameraman, are we up? Okay, we'll figure it out. So anyway, guys, I am so happy to see you all today. Um, okay, two weeks of Thanksgiving, 14 days, I'm going to do it. Don't forget, share this video. Let somebody know, hey, there's this new cook out there. Her name is Chef Glorious. She's kind of fun. She talks a lot. She's got a lot of energy, but we like her and she's fun. Let them know that. And okay, I see already Sarah is here. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. Michigan gets the first shout out today. Now, make sure you put those cities and states down. I want to see where the family is so we can share the love. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Now that Thanksgiving is almost here, we have been cooking up a storm. We've made, I thought about this today, you guys. Do you realize we have made sausage and mushroom dressing? We've done peach cobbler. We did macaroni and cheese already. We've like really kind of come a long way on getting ready for the holidays. So that means that we're, we're really rounding the corner. I put up a video this week, corn casserole, corn pudding or corn casserole. I call it corn pudding. My kids say corn casserole. Whatever you call it, I put up a video of it this week. It's really good. I love it. I ate the stuff like for lunch and dinner by itself. It was so good. And uh, within the next two days, I am putting out my sweet potato pie recipe. People who know me, everybody loves my sweet potato pie. I'm not trying to brag on myself. I'm not. I wouldn't do that. I would talk a lot. Y'all know that, but I wouldn't brag. But I'm going to tell you something. My sweet potato pie, yeah, that thing is good. So the video is, I'm finishing editing it. It will be out either Friday or Saturday. I'm so excited to share it with you. You guys have been giving me requests. I've got some playlists. I'm going to put stuff up there so you can find it. You can shoot me a message. I'll try to write you right back, tell you where you can find it. Now let's get into it. Cities and states, guys. I see someone from Virginia. Good to see you. Shout, share this video. Hit the button. Share, share, share. Today we're making side dishes. So we're going to try to make two dishes. And I say try because y'all know what happens when I try to do multiple dishes. You know, I mean, we get them done, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's interesting how it happens. But we're going to start with cream spinach. Now, I love cream spinach, okay? My husband and I love to go out to a particular restaurant, and one of the things we eat there all the time is their cream spinach because it is delicious. And anything I love that much, I try to learn to make. So today we're going to start with cream spinach. And cream spinach is not, it's really not hard to make. It's really just spinach and a creamy cheese sauce. You know, but let's just, let's go through it. So first thing we're going to do, got a little olive oil here. We're going to start every good meal starts with what y'all? Yes, right. You said it. Garlic and onions. We're going to start with some garlic in here. It's about a teaspoon or so of garlic. You know, I love those little minced garlic things. And we've also got here some chopped yellow onions. Now I'm all about buying my own onions and chopping them up. And all of that good stuff, you know what I mean, guys? But I got to be honest with you. When it gets to Thanksgiving time and we've got all of this cooking to do, I can't keep up. So I just buy them from the store. <laughs> this is about, right here, about a cup. Oh, well, no. A little bit more. Ah, let's just put them all in there. There we go. That's about an onion. All right, so we've got some garlic going and some onion. Now, again, when you're doing all this holiday cooking, you can always buy garlic cloves. I have a big bag of cloves in my refrigerator now, but honestly, there's so much cooking that you're going to do. Consider making it easy on yourself and just get stuff that's, you know, like the chopped onions, the minced garlic, because I'm going to be probably cooking three to five meats for Thanksgiving. I think my list right now is 10 side dishes or more. And then you got the dessert situation. So you can't do but so much. So with this cream spinach, what we're going to start with is you're going to soften up your onions and your garlic together. You see, you just want to get these going here. See here? You want to get these soft. And then after these get soft, we're going to add to it our spinach. Now I'm going to 
Put a little more olive oil in here. And you notice I'm using olive oil just because I want to get it, I just want to give it a little juice to cook in, you know? Now, you can always just put the onions straight into your spinach, cream spinach, or any dish. But the onions, as they cook, they're going to release moisture. And so as they release that moisture, it can kind of affect the texture and the consistency of your dish. So it's just a good idea in general to just, first of all, saute them and soften them up. And even though we have some minced garlic in here, we're going to go in with a little garlic powder. I've got about a teaspoon here. Y'all remember the shot glass measuring cup? <laughs> That's about a teaspoon of garlic powder. I, I'm putting them in these little things because you guys know I've got these huge si sizes of all of these spices up. It's just too big to pull that stuff out. And that garlic powder is going to be so good in there. And we're basically going to make a cream cheese cream sauce. Now, the cheese that I use when I make this is Havarti because Havarti is unbelievably delicious. I love Havarti. And it's so creamy and rich and thick. See how this is cooking up? And just keep going in there with your olive oil. YouTube family, I apologize. I'm having some technical difficulties getting you up so I can see you. If you're there, though, YouTube, I'm trying. I'm trying, YouTube. I'm trying. But I may have to let it go. You guys know I'll always come back, though, and respond to your comments. Okay. So, now the thing about spinach when you're cooking spinach is it wilts. It cooks down to nothing. Have you ever noticed with spinach, like, it, this is how much we're using. This is just three, three bags. This is about, you know, the bags of spinach. I have three of those in here. And you see how it looks like, oh, my God, all this spinach. Watch. When this cooks down, it's going to cook down to next to nothing. Now, the way I like to add spinach into a pan like this when I'm sauteing is a little at a time. Okay, so you see I'm going to start adding this. And I'm going to let this cook down because I can't get all of it in there at once. Okay, and just cook it down a little at a time. Now, you can definitely blanch it a little bit ahead of time. Just put it in some water and kind of, you know, like quick boil it or steam it. That's fine. You do you, boo. You know what I'm saying? It's your thing. Do it. Okay. But I like to just kind of put a little at a time. See here, and we're going to cook it down. And I love using Havarti cheese, like I was saying, in this. I have a very good girlfriend who turned me on years ago. So a good girlfriend of mine. She and I actually talk to each other every year at Thanksgiving. And we talk about what we're cooking. And we have this long conversation about how, you know, I'm making this, girl. You making it? It's, it's like something I look forward to, even if we haven't talked in months. Either the day, probably the day before Thanksgiving, we're going to be on the phone for at least an hour talking about what we're cooking. And one year she said, girl, you know, I love Havarti in my cream spinach. And that thing just sounded right to me, y'all. So I tried it, and ever since then, I've been a believer. <laughs> she knows who she is. Hello, I see some good folks out there joining us. Make sure you share this video, guys. And... Shout out those cities and states so we can know where the fam is. So you see how I'm continuing to cook this and it's just cooking down? If it gets a little dry, just take your olive oil. It's not going to hurt anything. Nothing bad is going to happen. It's just olive oil. Olive oil is your friend, okay? See there? And what's also really good about spinach is it's very high in fiber and it's really, I just like it. I probably shouldn't have done this much with you guys, but oh well. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, fam. Oh, I see Dallas is in the house. See that? See how the onions are continuing to cook and the garlic is continuing to cook as well? Okay. I'm going to stop here, cook this down because I got a lot to make. But um, I think I was a little too adventurous in what I took out tonight for you guys. My apologies, family. I'm so glad we're close like this. So we're going to then make, I had to reach over and get another bowl. We're going to, after this cooks down, we're going to make a cream sauce, a cream cheese sauce, and it's going to be rich and delicious. Now, you may be thinking, why didn't I chop the spinach up? You can absolutely chop up your spinach ahead of time if you want to. I don't because the spinach withers up to such little, you know what I mean? I mean, look at that. You know, you get what I'm saying? So just, I just leave them. Okay, there you go. Now, you don't want to cook your spinach down so much until you don't even know what it is anymore. Okay? But you see how this is cooking down? That's what you want. Oh, this looks good. Look at that, guys. Now, side note, when you're just having a regular dinner any old day, you can do that as well. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of my Chef Laurie's house seasonings in here. You guys, I gotta make some more seasoning too. Thanksgiving is here. And I am just about out. Because it's been, I've sold out. You guys are amazing. I'm out of Chef Laurie's seasoned pepper, so I'm using our old standby tonight, guys. But I'm gonna get some more in stock before Thanksgiving, I promise you that. Okay, now we're gonna take this and we're going to remove this, pour it into this bowl, okay? I'm just going to set it aside here in this bowl, okay? Again, guys, if you're just joining us, welcome. We are making cream spinach. Tonight, we're trying to do two side dishes, but y'all know sometimes me and two side dishes don't always get along. I get too excited. Okay, so you see that? Can you see that? This is how our spinach is starting. See there? This is spinach, garlic, and onions that have been cooked together with some garlic powder as well and some seasoning, okay? All right, now we're going to make ourselves a roux in this. So we're going to take a little bit of butter. I'm going to take a half a stick of butter, okay? And I'm going to let this butter start to melt down, okay? And to that, we're going to add a little bit of flour. See how it's just coming? And don't worry if you get some of the goodies on the bottom. It's okay. Nothing's going to go wrong. To that, I'm going to add about a teaspoon or two of flour. We're going to whisk this together. You with me guys? We're making a simple roux. And this is going to thicken up our cream sauce. Okay, somebody's asking about house seasonings. Um, you can go to my website, has them. Um, there's also a link on my page. We have the Chef Laurie's house seasoning, Chef Laurie's signature seasoned pepper, and our barbecue sauce, barbecue spice rather. Okay, see there? We're just making a nice little simple roux. See? Now to this we're going to add some heavy cream. I've got about a cup of heavy cream. I'm not going to use as much as I initially planned to on this because I didn't cook at all of that spinach. See here? See how this is thickening up? There we go. Oh, that's looking good. Now to this we're going to start adding our cheese. Don't get your heat too high. Yeah, see how it's thickening? This is why you got to be careful when you're making these roux. All that flour is going to thicken because you put the flour in the liquid, it's just going to turn into paste. Now, Havarti cheese is hard sometimes to find shredded, so I just get the slices and I add the slices. This is one, two, three, about four. And it make it as cheesy and as creamy as you guys like it, okay? Because everybody's cheese tolerance is different. Now, as you're mixing it, see how it's melting? If it's, oops, if it starts to seem like it's a little too thick, all you gotta do is just mix a little bit more cream in there, okay? See there, see how it's melting? That's all you got, that's all you're doing. See, this is not hard. See, I told you, a little more cream. Now, when you're making this for Thanksgiving or when I'm making a whole bunch like I originally planned, I'll take the entire amount in the bowl and dump it back in here. But I'm not gonna do it that way tonight because I did not cook all of the spinach that was in the original bowl. I think we were a little too ambitious with how much spinach to cook tonight. <laughs> See that, guys? Doesn't that look good? See how creamy and rich that is? Oh, that looks good. It smells so good. I'm going to turn the heat off. A little more cream. And then what I'm going to do is start adding this. To, this time, I'm going to add it back to this bowl. Usually, I just put the spinach back in this, but I did not cook all of it. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. My husband's giving me that look like, Lori, Lori, Lori. But he loves me. I think I just picked the wrong thing up, guys. I did. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to pour a little bit in. You don't need a ton of this sauce. See here? Back. I'm sorry, guys. See here? You don't need a ton of the cream sauce in there. I'm going to put a little bit more. Because you, now if you want it just to be super duper creamy, knock it out. Honey, pour to your heart's content. You know what I'm saying? But you see how that is? That looks good. Oh, that looks dope. Ooh. Mmm. Can y'all smell the Havarti? Who smells the Havarti? I know y'all smell the Havarti. I know you, I see you. I see you. I see you sniffing your screen. Oh, now here comes the secret, you guys, to what makes this really good. A little bit of nutmeg. Just a smidge. Not a whole lot, just a smidge of nutmeg. Just like maybe a half a teaspoon. See how I just put a little bit in there? See, look, look. Am I too close? Just a little bit. Oh, I see Sarah smells it. Oh, y'all, this is so good. <laughs> Ooh, 
Okay, so now if this is creamy enough for you and yours, stop here. Okay, if this is creamy enough for you guys. If you want it a little bit creamier like my crew, just take a little bit more of that sauce, pour it in there, hit it with a little smidge of that nutmeg, and you guys will notice this is probably the only dish in the world that I don't add cayenne to. <laughs> All right, so you see there, you guys? That's it. It's really that easy. Now, you can add a little more salt if you want, but our house seasoning has salt in it. The good part about cream spinach, too, y'all, everything is done. So we get to taste it. Ah, yeah. See here? Oh, now chop the spinach up if you want to. I like it like this. Oh, this looks so good. I hope I don't burn my mouth. Lord, I don't want to embarrass myself burning my mouth. If you haven't figured it out, I'm talking to give this a minute to cool off. I'm slick like that. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Mm. I'm going to put a little more salt in it. Oh, it's so good and creamy and rich. I wish all of y'all were here right now. All of them. I wish right now all of us were here together so we could eat this together. I mean, I'd make all the spinach. But y'all know, oh, okay. So we're gonna take a dish here, have a nice dish, okay? Sprayed with, with um, baking spray. Put it in the dish, just like this. Again, normally if it's full, you know, it doesn't matter how full it is because everything is done. And you're going to bake this in the oven at 375 degrees for about really like 20 minutes or so. Now, you're not baking it to get it done because the dish is already done. Okay, the dish is cooked. But you want to bake it until it gets golden brown and a little bubbly. See that? I'm telling you, this is so good. So you guys know I made one already, right? So let me get that one for you guys. Y'all know I made it, y'all know I set it aside, and y'all know my family got into it. I, I don't know. Let's see, look how this came out. Look at that, see? Creamy. I told you we like it real creamy. But if you don't like it this creamy, just put less of the cheese in there. But this is on the money right here. Right on the money, okay? All right, so that's cream spinach, guys. It's not hard to do, very easy, and straightforward. Next. We're going to make our second side dish of the night, which is crispy fried Brussels sprouts. Yeah, you heard it. Let it sink in, y'all. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. We're going to fry some Brussels sprouts. Now, I didn't like Brussels sprouts most of my life. I didn't. That's the truth. I'm not going to act like I did. I didn't. Okay? But I discovered crispy frying them, and everything changed. Now, I'm going to put this towel here over this burner, because this burner is still a little hot. It's turned off, it's just a little hot, I don't want to accidentally burn anything, so I'm working on this side. Now, when you're making crispy fried Brussels sprouts, here's the deal. You gotta get them and cut them in half, okay? So my cameramen are coming around, I gotta adjust things. As I told you, when we make two dishes in one night, sometimes things happen. <laughs> it gets interesting. They're already like, oh my goodness. You know, this is part of why I cook so much because this keeps them coming and keeps them working with me. Okay, now they're telling me to hurry up. Okay, so now the key with crispy Brussels Brussels sprouts is the sprouts have to be dry. Okay, come here, look at me for a minute. This is utterly important because when you fry them, they are going to go, I mean, everywhere, okay? They, because they just are a moisture-holding vegetable. So if they have just a little bit of moisture outside of just the natural moisture in them, you will get popped and some things will happen, okay? It's going to be okay. Every cook has been popped. You know, I've got pops, but dry them. So what I usually do is I cut them up the night before and wash them and clean them, and I lay them out individually like on a cookie tray on a paper towel or something so they have time to air out or on a baking dish so they can air out. You want them dry. Okay, that's important. Now, when we fry these, we're going to also make with them a, uh, a little honey glaze. The first thing I did was I fried up some bacon. Okay, this is about three cups of bacon that I fried up. Isn't it funny how you can have a whole bunch of bacon and you fry it and it shrinks down? Yeah, it happened again. But anyway, this is the bacon that we're going to use with it. Oh, I got some cream there. Okay, and we're going to put these in the fryer, and it's best to cut them in half. Now, you can cut them smaller, but I've always, I've cut them smaller, I've cut them larger, and I've landed at saying this is the best way to do it. Now, are y'all ready for it? I'm using my deep fryer today. Because this is, uh, 
Yeah, this is a little, this one is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, y'all do sense hesitation in my voice because every time I do this, I just get a little pop. Okay, I'm gonna put these in here. They fry up very easy, they're delicious and crispy. You wanna have a splatter screen or a um, cover or something. The guys are coming around to get this camera angle. Thanks for your patience, guys. I love you guys. I just do. I mean, we have the best family here. I'm hoping you can see me, YouTube. You guys, the fellas are coming around the other side. All right, so we're gonna lower these down. In. Did you see that? Did you see that little bit, how it went pop? And these are dry. These have been sitting out and they're dry. But that's what happens. Now, it doesn't take Brussels sprouts a long time to fry up. And what we're gonna do while they're in there frying is we're gonna put our little glaze together. And this is what makes them really good. We take a little bit of honey, okay? Now, you don't have to measure these exact because you're just gonna do this to taste, okay? You guys, thanks for your patience. This is what I was telling you when I tried to do two dishes. The guys are giving me that look. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna squeeze a good bit of honey there. We're gonna use a little lime juice as well, okay? Lime juice, just a few squirts in there, okay? Now, on this recipe, I get to use my favorite, my cayenne, because <laughs> it gives it just a little bit of kick with this, delicious. And you can make it spicy as you want. I made this at Thanksgiving last year, and I'm telling you guys, it was a hit. Take your little whisk, whisk it together. You're just making like a little dressing, see that? See that? Now what I also like to add to this dressing, just because my folks are from the south and we kind of country, this is some of that bacon grease. You know, now you don't have to do that. Somebody said one time, why the extra bacon grease? Because bacon grease makes everything better, duh. And you might think to yourself, that's not a lot of um, this dressing. You don't need a lot. Okay, we're gonna lift this up and look at these sprouts. Oh, wow, look guys, look at that. Look how beautiful they look. See how they're frying up all pretty? See that? Almost done. We want them to have that brown edge look around them, okay? We're gonna let them keep going a few more minutes. Doesn't take long, but you want that edge on them. So when they come out, we're going to put them on this tray, okay? You'll notice we've got a cookie tray, I've got paper towel, and I have a baking sheet here. This baking sheet is to drain this excess fat, okay? It's a, the, the hot oil down, okay? We're gonna do that, and then, we're gonna put them in there and we're gonna toss them up and you guys, it's gonna be delicious. So I'm sorry if we're a few minutes past our normal 845. Y'all please don't be mad. Okay, we're not there yet. Woo, sister was getting worried. <laughs> I have a few minutes left, y'all. Okay. Oh, wee I know you wish you were here. I know you wish you were here. You see that? You can roast the Brussels sprouts and do this recipe, but honestly, you guys, it tastes so much better when they're fried. Oh, look at that. See that? You see that? And they smell, you know, and I love the, the, the nutty smell of Brussels sprouts. So I'm gonna let these drain a little bit because they look just like I want them to look. They're nice and crisp. Oh, look at that, you guys. That look good, don't it? <laughs> Make sure you share this video. All right, so we're gonna take these now. Now y'all pray my basket don't mess up on me because you know I got this at Walmart, right? <laughs> All right, there we go. Turn it over nice and gentle. There we go. Okay, let me put this back in here, like this, edge, there we go. Okay, so you see how I'm letting that just kind of set for a second? Now I'm gonna take the sprouts and start putting them into this dressing. Just like this. See here? Oh, this is so good already. And you might think, oh no, it's not enough dressing. You're not trying to sauce these sprouts. All you're doing is putting a glaze on them. It's a sweet glaze. And can I tell you something? You will wanna sit down by yourself and eat this entire thing. And I'm not gonna tell you you shouldn't. See that? See, this is it. And then once you get them in there, you're gonna take this and just toss them around. See that light glaze? Can you see it, guys? Let me get a better light for you here. Can you see that? 
See how the, how the light glaze is on there and the bacon is in there? That's it. That is it. It's that easy to do crispy fried Brussels sprouts. Now, if you don't have a deep fryer, I've done these on my stove top. You guys have seen me do stove top frying before. You know, when I just put something in um, one of my stock pots with some oil. That works with this too. That works absolutely. Ooh, these look so good. I cannot wait. Oh, okay, let's taste, let's taste. So when you taste it, you wanna make sure you get a sprout. See that? See how that glaze is dripping right there? See that? And that piece of bacon in there? All right, let's see. This is my favorite side dish now. My new favorite. Well, I don't know if it's my new. Hmm. Because I just thought about the dressing and the mac and cheese and the collard greens. This is why you have to start eating early on Thanksgiving. So you have time to circle through everything. And there's a little kick of that cayenne in there. So you guys, tonight we did it. We made two side dishes, okay? You've got cream spinach made with Havarti cheese. Yummy, delicious. Okay, we're going to bake the other one in the oven at 375. And we've got crispy Brussels sprouts with a honey lime glaze and bacon. All right, guys? This is how you have Thanksgiving. When somebody tells you, we, oh, I don't like Brussels sprouts, you tell them, oh, oh yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah, you will. You ain't been mild. Yeah, you will. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you so much. Thanks for being with me. Two weeks to Thanksgiving, 14 days. So remember to make sure you check out the page, check out my YouTube. I've got some playlists on there with a whole bunch of Thanksgiving foods. The sweet potato pie recipe will be coming out Friday morning or Saturday morning. Stay tuned for it. Thank you for 1,000 subs on, uh, on YouTube. <laughs> and you guys, don't forget, Chef Lori's seasonings. If you want some house seasoning or you want some seasoned pepper, there's still time. We can still get it to you in time. Let me know because we sell out. Every time we make it, we sell out. So. The page is, at the top of my page, there's a link to the, the shop where you can buy, order your seasonings, okay? Or just shoot me a message and say, hey, where do I do it? I'll, you, you guys get the point. You know what I'm saying? Y'all contact me, I'm contacting you back. You got it. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Next week, we have one more cook before Thanksgiving, y'all. This is it. This is it. Share this video. Have a wonderful day. Happy cooking.